I'm going to 100% Super Mario Odyssey by saving Peach from Bowser, collecting every Power Moon, all regional coins, all of the outfits, and completing the capture, souvenir, and music pages. In the skies above Peach's castle. This is the end for you! Is this the end of Chris Pratt? Will Peach really marry Bowser? Find out next time on Mario Odyssey! Bowser smacked me out of the Mushroom Kingdom so hard that I landed in a place called the Cap Kingdom, where I'm greeted by Cappy. Cause he's a Cap. No Cap, I ain't lying. Anyways, he informs me that his little sister Tiara has been kidnapped alongside Princess Peach. Thus, an alliance was formed and Cappy replaces Mario's signature hat with himself. As we looked for our very own airship, Cappy gave me a demonstration of his capture ability. Ability, the ability to possess the bodies of helpless bystanders. Remember when the Xbox One X was announced? And no one really seemed to care? Then literally a day later, Nintendo said, You throw your hat on a frog, and you're the frog! And the crowd went nuts? Seriously, there's no other video game character who could simply turn into an animal and get you excited like that. Anywho, Cappy and I made it to the peak of Cap Kingdom, and are then confronted by Bowser's wedding planners, the Brutals. The green, short, and stocky one challenges us to a face-off. Unlike the frog, I can't capture him because of his three hats. That doesn't mean I can't knock them off. His noggin is exposed. Jump attack. Let's do it again. One, two, three, finish him. <laughs> ah. Oh, crap. I killed him. I didn't mean for it to go that far. I thought this was a lighthearted kids game. Well, guess that makes me a fugitive on the run. We still need an airship, so onto the Cascade Kingdom we go. This is the first time I've touched grass since becoming a YouTuber. Oh no, a chain chomp. Whatever will I do? <laughs> do you not realize the power I wield? After using the chain chomp, Cappy and I grab our first moon, which will be the first of many to energize this rusted odyssey. With all of this fossil debris lying around, I can't think of a better helper than this Tyrannosaurus Rex. Still crazy to think I have nothing to fear from this monstrosity thanks to Cappy's powers. There's our second moon. I go kill some chain chomps. And what the flip just happened? <gasps> it's too big. That's what she said. <laughs> Another marvelous addition to this game are the 8-bit pipes that turn Mario 2D to traverse the classic styled walled sections. Above the fossil heights awaited yet another brutal with her golden hound. Her necklace held three power moves, which meant we had a battle on our hands. The madam thinks her chain chompkins is safe from harm because of its pink hat, but I beg to differ. You're in for a rude awakening, lady. <laughs> Furious, Madame Brutal tries hurling her pooch at me, but it's to no avail. Ole! She must be embarrassed because she's getting pink in the face. Time to say adios. Ooh, it's gotta hurt. Another Brutal dead means more power moons for me. This multi-moon gives Mario the power of flight. Are we ever gonna use this skill? No? That's a shame. Back to hunting down moons on foot, I suppose. Before checking back with the worn out Odyssey, I surveyed the rest of Cascade Kingdom for any outstanding moons. There are cap doors that contain their own set of platforming, and scarecrows that hold onto Mario's hat while I jump my way up fast enough to beat the time trial. That should be enough for now. I deposit the moons into the ship, restoring the Odyssey to its proper form. And we're off! I take in the view as we soar into the clouds. Then Cappy transforms into a captain's hat to commemorate our departure from Cascade Kingdom. Inside, Cappy reads about our next destination being the Sand Kingdom, where Bowser plans to steal a wedding ring for his ceremony. There's no time to waste. Let's land in the desert, which strangely is freezing cold for some odd reason. Oh, no, 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 no. That guy owes me money. Well, let's hope I can at least warm up my hands since rumble is apparently required for this game. Hello, and welcome to my kickstream where Mario plays slots in front of children. Back to trekking the Sandlands, I continue to use Cappy's OP capture ability to take control of my enemies and sacrifice them all for the sake of my progression. <laughs> I proceed to climb the highest tower in the ruins, but notice my true goal is that inverted pyramid. So I should run straight towards it, right? Wrong. We're taking the long way. Don't ask me why. Check it out. 
Terminator. These must be some expensive shades if they let you see invisible platforms. Gathering five moon shards caused a full moon to appear. That specifically opens the path into the inverted pyramid. So there was a reason for not going directly there. <gasps> a human? Hey, you we want cat. That didn't sound like a human. Keep my wife's name out your mouth! Now that's what a real human sounds like. Wait, is Mario a human? He sure doesn't look like one. Anyhow, inside the inverted pyramid, I also turned upside down when I entered the 2D world. Pipe after pipe, I gradually climbed the inside of the Egyptian shrine, fly my way into secret rooms, and find Bowser's ship floating above the monument. He of course departs at the site of my arrival, letting his lackey rabbits do the dirty work for him. Hold up. He's supposed to be dead! That means I must not be a murderer! <laughs> Knowing I'm just an innocent Mario makes me so happy. Now that I know she'll live, I'm gonna slaughter this brutal. You gonna try to throw a spike bomb at me? Well, I'll chuck it right back. Woohoo! Flustered, she hides in her metal hat and floats like a UFO. Probably the same ones talked about during the congressional hearings. What's most disturbing about it is her laugh. <laughs> That's it. I'm popping you like I did to your brother. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure she's okay. Our fight must have taken all day because the actual moon is out and the pyramid begins to float into the sky. By the way, see the pawn shows the residents wear here? Bam! Cultural appropriation. Like and subscribe for my bravery. How you doing? I'm what you call a jacksy. <laughs> Whoa, 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 easy boys, slow down, give me the coins, and take me to the hold beneath the pyramid. Underneath the sands is an underground temple with icy, slippery floors, but apparently Goombas don't have that issue because they're rocking the sturdy 13s. At the end of the sanctuary, two stone fists swoop right past me. Where? Ring? Go! You take ring! Andros? Is that you? I wouldn't do that, big guy. You might. Ouch. I tried to warn you. Full throttle, speed ahead. <laughs> That'll teach you. The rock head slams the ground in retaliation, causing icicles to drop from the ceiling. But he can't let go of those old habits. Target in sight. I'm in pursuit. <laughs> clap, 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 clap your hands. Cappy, let's finish this. Oh, my bad. I can drive, I promise. Oh, man, am I a woman? Get him out of here. That's another three moons for us with plenty more to collect now that the Sand Kingdom is warmed up again like it should be. Perfect weather to go fishing. Fishing shadows, that is. I don't really get it, but hey, I reeled in a cheap cheap holding a moon. The Sand Kingdom is the kingdom of many firsts that have similar missions peppered throughout the rest of the world. Like this painting that takes me to an isolated rooftop in New Dong City. And a Koopa that challenges you to walk in a circle as perfectly as you can. Man, it's getting hot. Sun's out, nipples out. Hey, at least Mario has nipples. Poor Wario doesn't have any. While I capture this flying lizard and take to the skies, let me know who you'd rather take to the beach with you. Nipple Mario or Nippleless Wario? Mario continues to charade as a Mexican even though he's a natural New Yorker, proving he truly is an anti-woke force. Enough of that, Mario. Let's load up the airship with moons, powering up the Odyssey to continue our chase. Cappy's brochure reads the Lake Kingdom is next, where Bowser is likely going to steal a wedding dress. Slight correction. It looks like the brutals are the ones picking up the gown. Don't worry, Peach. I'll stop them with my zipper powers? Zippers, where zippers shouldn't be. Evil seaweed. Yes, Bowser has recruited the algae. Goomba's wearing veils. What are they up to? You know, I gotta tell you, this really does put me in a better mood. I wish there was a job where I could wear this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, Dory the Blue Loch Ness Monster is still on our side. And I want to breathe underwater like him. Come here, Cheep Cheep. Let's terrorize the townsfolk. Ha ha! Look at her. She's scared out of her mind. Bow before me. The dreaded Cheep Cheep. Whoa, Mario, what are you doing to her? We gotta break the world record for fastest dive down into the North Atlantic Ocean. Make sure to watch out for that iceberg right ahead. Oh look, the Titanic. Leonardo DiCaprio's here too. I'll never let go, Jack. 
I'll never let go. After resurfacing, I made my way to the Water Plaza Terrace to confront the Brutals, specifically the tall, lanky one. And let me tell you, this guy is stupid. See for yourselves. I flip over his hat, bounce off the flower, and now look at him. Huh? Where'd he go? I can't see him. Bro tries to throw me off with a curveball, but the dude is too dumb for his own good. Before I dried off and left, this was the first kingdom where I collected every single purple coin, which I used to purchase the kingdom's signature swimwear and souvenirs. I then juice up the Odyssey with more moons and set sail for the Wooded Kingdom, a place filled with flowers perfect for a wedding bouquet. A rabbit! It must be working for the Brutals! Get him! <laughs> Unfortunately, this green forest has been polluted by the piranha plant sludge. Well, we prefer the term ooze, but yeah. It's like more like, it's just nicer. It, it, it rolls yeah. off the it's tongue cool. better, yeah. Ooze. 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 It's nice, right? You think I really care what you call it? Get decapitated. Ow, my head. The minions that are going to prove useful to me are the potheads, because they get me high, if you know what I mean. Aw, oh, yeah, it's like crack. I love that feeling. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. No way, a flower road just appearing right before my eyes? I thought hallucination after effects were supposed to be rare. Okay, enough of the recreational use. Let's take on the fourth brutal at the Sky Garden Tower. Okay, that was a little obnoxious. Oh, oh, and now you're vomiting. That's just wonderful. Please clear the way, Cappy. This guy needs a head bonkin'. Poison? I do not understand the biology of this rabbit. I KO'd him like the rest of them, watched him explode, snagged the multi-moon, got high again, like really high in the clouds with the para-goombas, but decided to get back down to earth and chill with my fellow goombas. I brought back some takeout, so like, let's get down and pig out. It's Shredder! Yeah! I continued to defy the law of physics with Mario's immaculate gymnastic skills, grabbing a hold of a diarrhea flower that made me go rolling around at the speed of sound, then took control of an inanimate object, that being a tank. Pew! Nailed it! Target hit! Bullseye! Now what were the Brutals up to in the secret flower field? Oh my gosh! It's the UAP the government's been talking about! Flowers! 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 Must have all the flowers! Do not mess with me! Biped! Biped? You dare mock the great Super Mario who likes to get high? Foolish mistake! Strum that bass, editor! Pressure! Pushing up on you! Jumping over hoops, that all you got. Doom, 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 da da doom, doom. Doom, 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 da da doom, doom. And that's essentially how the fight goes. Sure, there are hurdles to jump, but they're not a problem when I have legs like Patrick Starr. In the end, the flower sucking machine just couldn't handle the pressure. I may have won the battle, but the war continued since Bowser's mercenaries had already grabbed the flowers they needed for the wedding, so I returned to surveying the woods for more moons. Mario, can you please stop climbing up? I can't keep making the same joke over and over again. Let's try going in the opposite direction for once. Gosh dang it, I'm hallucinating again. <laughs> All right, there's gotta be some moons down here in the depths. There's probably one at the end of this pipe maze. I haven't frantically gone through this many pipes since that one Mario Party minigame. Aw, oh, check it out. I can be a tree. Take notes, Sony and Microsoft. This is peak gameplay. And it only gets better. Tell me why I need another pet rock. No time to listen to Weird Al, Mario. There's a Tyrannosaurus Rex on our tail. Normally, nothing is a threat when you have a magical pal like Cappy, but this is different. The dino is wearing a hat. The Kryptonite of Cappy. How will we best it in a brawl? How? Oh, well, that works. I think that's enough adventure in the Wooded Kingdom. Huh? What's outside the window? It's Bowser's ship. We must go after it. Bowser must have seen us too since he parked in the Cloud Kingdom. By the way, why is it called a kingdom? There's no buildings. Why can't we just call it a cloud? Shutting up. Got bigger issues at the moment. Mario, I don't have time for you. I'm busy planning my wedding. Don't you know how stressful that is? Actually, yes, I do. My engagement was five weeks. It was terrible. Bowser, are you even listening? Ah, he about to throw hands. 
He doesn't even know about my elaborate strategy, though. <laughs> you idiot. You think I was just gonna stand there and do nothing? <laughs> Cappy says thou teach him, but I must disagree with my friend. He's doing the same tactic again. What a moron. Dash, dash. One, two. Faster, faster. Hit him, baby. Again? Seriously? You're just asking to lose. Punch, 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 punch. Nani, he blocked that? There's still nothing to worry about. He slips and I finish him off. Fire! Freaking A, cannonballs. Hold on to your butt, Cappy. Looks like Team Mario's blasting off again. What is this place? I don't know, but the Odyssey is all busted up and we're gonna need some power moons to fix it. Where to start, where to start? <laughs> Cappy! I'll save you! I'll surprise attack the vulture with the stairs by ground pounding. I won't rescue him too fast though. It's nice to have a break from your companion every once in a while. Okay, now I'll save you. I sure hope that doesn't happen again. 21 and a half hours later. Exploring the Lost Kingdom for Moons introduced me to a couple of new enemies like this evil metal looking button that takes a hold of Cappy, then fires off in my direction, which I could manipulate for my own needs. There's these tropical styled wigglers that make musical sounds when stretched. And this darn butterfly was a nuisance to catch. That is, until I found out I only needed to throw Cappy from the right distance. I think I just like to make things harder for myself. I overthink most puzzles by believing they need to be solved the hard way, which results in me sacrificing myself in vain. Sometimes the simplest way is the best. Well, that's all the moons I could find for now, and I got all the 50 purple coins. Odyssey is repaired, and we successfully land in Metro Kingdom. Of course, Bowser is up to no good, attempting to absorb the power from New Donk City. Hey, Pauline. I saw you on TV on my way over here. Everything is under control, I promise you. We are very close to fixing this. <laughs> Somebody help! Somebody save Brooklyn! Everything is clearly not under control, and you are clearly not going to fix this. Not only is the power out, there are maggots and flies everywhere. There's only one way to exterminate pests in the real world, and that's through excessive force. After exterminating those bugs, I head straight to the Sky Tower to squash the real vermin causing the outage. I cross the left behind construction beams, enter the building's interior, scale the inside with Mario's platforming prowess, then zap myself the rest of the way up. Now to unplug this mecha wiggler. Come on, Mario! What kind of defense was that? Joke's on them, though. There's no fall damage in this game. Let's not act so incapable this time. Tink! Armed and ready. Aim. Fire! 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 Its shields are down. Let him have it! The Mecha Wiggler undertakes a counterattack by emerging from a self-made portal. As long as I stay moving, it's an empty threat. The Mech retreats back onto the city walls, then deploys electrical orbs, which I prioritize nullifying first. Once those are disposed, I target the Mecha Wiggler's body once again, blowing up all of its parts. Then it explodes from tail to head, restoring peace to the city. Bowser already made his escape, but I'm stuck here a little longer to power up my vest. Jump, man. Ah, a fan of my work. Least I can do for you is try your jump roping challenge. Honestly, I feel the beginning is the hardest part about this challenge. The speed of the rope is so slow that it's difficult to pick up a rhythm. But once they get it going fast, I got to 100 jumps easily. 200 actually. Then I got bored. Aw oh, yeah, a manhole? I've always wanted to be one of these. In a traffic cone? Actually, no. What ding is approved of this? Ooh, it flicks. Everyone in New Dong City is sporting some sort of hat. That is, except for this guy. Hold on, is this ethical? Possessing animals is already one controversy, but humans? Just no one tell Pauline, or I'll have to throw Cappy on you. Speak of the devil, Mayor Pauline requires my assistance to recruit four musicians for the city's festival. Ah. Yes. Now play this note right here, that's a G. Okay. But let your fingers do the rock and keep that G coming all day long. Okay! And last is the trumpeter. But who cares about that? Check out my fit. 
America, freak yeah! My pronouns are U-S-A. Unfortunately, Mayor Pauline is a typical politician, which means she's gonna give me another assignment while she does nothing. Poor Mario has to deal with all the blue collar work. The underground plant seems to be out of commission and is filled with poisonous waters, plants from the little shop of horrors, and Bowser's graffiti. Pauline? How'd you get past all that hoopla? Whatever, I'ma bring these piranha plants heads to the chopping block. Now for the love, Mayor Pauline. Please tell me there are no more issues with the city. And are you kidding me? The kingdom is powered by a plethora of moons? Can I please take some with me? Uh, no. Be that as it may, I do get to play as the star of the festival. Jump, man. Jump. Funny. Haven't heard that one before. Anyways, I'm not here to give snarky comments. This is a celebration of Mario being a part of our lives. 17 years ago on my fourth birthday, my cousin gifted me his Game Boy with Super Mario Land 2 six golden coins. Starting from that moment, Mario has been a huge part of my life since. Whether he was saving the princess, drifting with his cart, pummeling Kirby, going to space, or freaking becoming a cat of all things to be, Mario, thank you for all of the happiness you've brought me. And I'd love to hear in the comments how you were first introduced to him as well. Farewell, Metro Kingdom. Hello, Snow Kingdom. Shiver me timbers, it's freezing out here. I hope you all don't mind me popping in your warm little hole. Ah, <laughs> oh, nice. A 370-inch mega TV? Sometimes I will just stand here and watch television for hours. I can't relax at a time like this. Bowser's taken the frost frosted cake and has locked the gate to the basement that can only be unlocked by reaching the ends of these four rooms. Area number one, I drop a frosty deuce. Area number two, I was quick on my feet. Area number three, the lanky brutal challenges me to a rematch, except this time he brought two hats. He has no style, he has no grace. This rabbit has a funny face. Area number four, I captured a cloud. So I huffed and I puffed and I blew the spine he's down opening the last hatch and you'll never guess what happened next bowser got away again oh who could have seen this coming whoa apparently everybody's chill now and i'm not saying that because of the weather it's because the round seals can race again however they need one more participant this round pinniped with no self-esteem hope you don't mind me controlling your impressionable mind let the bound bull grand prix begin instead of bouncing the shiverians refer to it as bounding as displayed next to the controls time it right whenever you hit the ground then you'll be bound 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 and rebound Easy enough. Just had to give it a try and I was rewarded handsomely for it. Better yet, the blizzard is gone. With clear skies, I could do my rounds, collect the moons, and get nostalgic with this room. Playing a song from Super Mario World. That's it for Snow Kingdom, because I'm ready to strip the snowsuit and bask in the sun. The local escargot aren't too fond of that octopus guzzling all the sparkling water. It's a catastrophe. Tourists won't visit. There's no beach volleyball until the monster situation is resolved. Bowser, I can get past the rolling spike balls. I can forgive you for kidnapping Peach. Heck, I can excuse racism, but I draw the line at canceling volleyball. You can excuse racism. Bottoms up. <laughs> That frazzled the squid, but not enough for it to leave its post. The paths to uncork the other fountains were met with surprise attacks, including the Super Mario 64 eels from Jolly Roger Bay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Hold your applause. It looks like this sucker's not out of the running yet. Mario, transform! I'll take over one of your kind, you big buffoon. Hold still, you hothead. Ah! Bald! Bald! Embarrassed, the mollusk spits out spike balls and pokey unicorn horns in retaliation. <gasps> I need to reload my water in the sea. Much better. It's over, Lenoir! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power! <laughs> oh no. I don't care what anyone says. That makes Mario a murderer. 
He literally exploded. Look at the bright side, though. More sparkling water for everyone else. And beach volleyball is back in commission, baby. Wait, why was I excited for this? I hate this minigame. This moon mission is amongst the least of my favorites. It inflicts an indescribable tension on your hands because it's so tedious and boring. 17 horrible minutes and 100 volleys later, I quit. I wasn't gonna give that event any more time out of my day than I had to. Calm down, Andrew, calm down. Enjoy the relaxation of a hula dance. Afterwards, I took one last swim where I had to sprint across this reef without my hat. Believe it or not, I actually had to pull up the action guide to learn how to quick swim like this. With a sufficient amount of moons gathered, it was on to the luncheon kingdom, where the brutals are after some cooking. The rabbit that's always calling in sick stands in my way, forcing me to rematch him. The man didn't bring any new strategy to the table. Cappy cleaned up as if he were poison control, and I stomped him into oblivion. However, Bowser had one more hiree at the summit of the volcano. Don't worry, fellow fork citizens. I will stop that fat hen and save your stew. These lava bubbles are mostly impervious to Mario's methods. If you can't beat them, join them. Since I haven't been able to cruise across lava like this in any Mario game, I surfed and leaped over all of the steamy pinkness. Pretty sure this is a dead end. Dude, shut it. There's purple coins over here. Now I've seen hammer bros, fire bros, but I've never seen a chef bro. These guys must be lugging Mary Poppins bags to carry all of those pans. During my ascent up the mountain were challenge rooms that tested my platforming capabilities with the lava bubble. Skinny dangerous ledges, a golden turnip that could moonify a stew. I've got a golden turnip. And to top it off, I became a piece of meat. Once again, peak gameplay. Over here, birdie! Come on, I know you want it! I'm meat with a mustache. Take the bait. It's working! It's working! The big pink hen drops me into the soup. I grab the multi-moon, then my plan is thwarted by the fowl when it notices me and kicks up a gust with its wings, causing the volcano to erupt, blasting me down to ground zero. Thus began my trek back up the Alp through the 2D world, seafaring the cascading magma and a whole lot of flick. <laughs> Launch sequence initiated. I'm coming for revenge, Cookatiel. Shocked, the gigantic hen spits out various fruits and veggies along with pink liquid. What is with Bowser's minions and vomiting? At least this one I can use to hit them on the head. The cycle repeats with the falling produce, then a slight wavy change with their fluid. The third spit up was the most complicated, having to time my jumps from liquid platform to liquid platform while evading the fruit. Knocked out, Cucatillo falls into the stew, adding that delicious chicken flavor we all love with our meals. The town's stupendous stew is saved, yet some of the villagers could use help preparing for the upcoming carnival. Tasks included using a lava bubble to heat up the simmer for other stews, plucking more golden turnips, and I wrapped up my trip traveling through a special painting to a special place called the Mushroom Kingdom. I can't wait to fully experience it later. For now, it's off to Bowser's Kingdom. What? Why are we shaking? What the flip? When did Bowser get a dragon? To those who say size doesn't matter, eh, I think it does. Let's see you survive this, plumber boy. You know, I really do hate that he toasted my ship again, but man, has my boy Bowser ever looked cooler than this? Freaking riding a dragon? As for me, I gotta figure out a way to leave this ruined kingdom. Via a spark plion, I made my way over to a stranded tower, where the dragon awaited my arrival. The atmosphere of this fight is truly epic, but the boss's attacks don't threaten me in the slightest. Watch out for the scary purple wheels. Then the dragon slams his chin on the tower, generates more purple streams, and lets me just waltz around on his head until I find his weak point. Even when I get struck by the violet rings, I'd recover by ground pounding a lump in the ground. This is the kind of boss they'd put at the end of the first open world Zelda game. After winning, the dragon's just chilling. You do you, bro. I'm going to invade Bowser's castle. Wait a second. This isn't his typical castle. That's right. This Japanese-themed fortress happens to be my favorite kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey. Even the Womps are Japanese-ified. This kingdom even has my favorite enemy to capture. Don't you dare mess with this pheasant's beak. It can kill spinies, swing across buildings like Spider-Bird, ricochet bombs, and like holes in walls. Why? 
Moon! Each of the courtyards are separated in the midst of reddish glowing clouds, which really shows the vastness of this palace. The 2D parts were displayed on folding screens. I dressed to match the theme, and I continued trying everything that's new. One eternity later. Enough! I gotta get serious here because the Brutals are back again! This time, the Lassie Brat has two braids. Twice the bombs, twice the explosions. I do manage to bounce back one of the riskier ones she throws, but it's generally safer to wait until she whips her hair back and forth with the big ones, because she's stunned for a longer period of time. Girly Girl is down and out. Maybe they actually die after the second defeat, because the Leprechaun is the only one left on that airship, and he's set on avenging his family with three hats. Make that eight hats. Dang it, I wasn't fast enough. 13 hats? Oof, I better be careful. One more hit and I would have been a goner. Good riddance, Brutals. May you rot in your graves. Bowser, stop this wild goose chase and hand over the princess. You coward, running away again? You're too late. We're off to our wedding ceremony on the moon. Oh no, you don't. Gosh darn it. How did I not see that coming? Now what? You've got to be kidding me. The Brutals are still alive? How are they surviving? Get over here, Pokio. Let's kill them for real this time. Bop! Down like an at-at you go. If you guys had any sense at all, you would have added some armor to the upper body of this device. <laughs> All right, one down, three to go. Bop, bop, two down, two to go. Here come more projectiles. What? Fire sparklers? Is this seriously the best you guys got? Now you're just making me feel bad for you all. Three down, one to go. Sparklers again? <laughs> yup. You all deserve to lose. The giant Robo Brutal then proceeds to explode, firing off fireworks in the sky resembling each of them. Bowser, we're on to you. Before taking off to the moon, I continued to make things harder for myself when gathering purple coins. Shoulda got Lakitu, bro. Poochie? What are you doing here? I've seen enough here, and I can't be late for the wedding. I deposit my moons, forming the sail into a sphere, which completes the Odyssey, and provides us with just enough energy power to fly to the moon. Cappy, will you do me the honors of getting my tuxedo ready? Let's show Bowser what we're made of. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Literally. Woohoo! Of course Bowser would make the only way to the chapel an underground lava path with Earth's gravity. Nothing a pair of bones can't handle, no wall a bonsai build can't break through, and don't count out the varsity team. Blue, 42, set, hut, hut! Oh shoot, Madame Brood is guarding the exit! And her Chain Chompkins is wearing three hats! I'm not messing around, lady. My girlfriend is about to become someone else's wife. That's the wedding bell ringing! Hurry, we're running out of time! <laughs> Hand her over, Bowser! The wedding's called off and we have you cornered! Uh... How do we keep falling for his tricks, Cappy? Come on, buddy, come on, pull me up! Ah! Careful, can't get my dapper wedding tux dirty. Bowser followed us down here and plans to have the final showdown in this arena. <laughs> Crashing the wedding, Mario? That's tacky, even for you. Bowser readies his boxing top hat, performs a backflip, which I'm not gonna lie, is impressive for a guy his size, then starts the final battle. You fool! You've fallen for the oldest trick in the book. After pounding Bowser with a few left and right hooks, the Koopa King takes a deep breath, then spits out a ferocious flame that he swings from side to side, which would have been a threat if Mario's backflips weren't so OP. And there goes Bowser again, throwing out in his cap, making him defenseless. Oh wait, what's this? A new move? Tail Whip? Bowser, don't you know that no one uses that move in Pokemon because it sucks? Shut up and take the L. I'm spinning like a ballerina. Nine hats? Am I in trouble now? No, no I am not. For the last time, I hop over the fire rings, dodge the spiked balls, get my defense lowered with the upcoming three tail whips, scratch that, four tail whips, then I swing the final blow, knocking out that incel kidnapper. <laughs> 
Heech, my darling, you've been saved at last. Uh, now what? Don't tell me. The wedding hall's basement is crumbling? Yep. Incoming moon rocks? Most likely. Bring it on. <laughs> There's no way out. But would it be possible? No. There's no way it could work. Cappy? <laughs> No freaking way! We're capturing Bowser! This is one of the most magical moments in gaming I've had in my entire life. The rush of memories that we observe through our sworn enemy's mind all leads up to us taking over our childhood nemesis. Yep, this is our only ticket out of here. Hang on tight, Peach. I got a feeling this is gonna be a bumpy ride. I have Bowser's Fury. I am the Koopa King. I have eight kids, but I can't control them. I feel the flames within. I kidnap princesses. I must confess that I feel like a Bowser. I hate the plumber scum. Wedding bills never rung. I must confess that I feel like a Bowser. I. I feel like a Bowser. I, I feel like a Bowser. Oh, I feel all of his rage pumping through my veins. For better or worse, the way out of this mess is near as I take Peach, Cappy, Bowser, and myself out of here through the power of electricity. Bowser and I crash land outside on the moon, while Peach floats down with more grace. You know, girl, I've been thinking. Bowser's big day has been ruined, but we're still dressed for the occasion. We've had a fling since 1985. Come on, princess. What do you say? What in the name of Sam Hill do you think you're doing, Bowser? You think she's still gonna marry you after all of that? Peach, marry me! I mean, I'm not saying a girl has to marry a guy that saves her, but come on! Peach and Mario clearly have a history. And then she has the audacity to steal Mario's Odyssey and possibly leave him stranded on the moon? This is not normal behavior in the slightest. I'm just Ken. Where I see love, she sees a friend. Lucky for me, Bowser makes a great stepping stool and we all make it home happily ever after. Home to the Mushroom Kingdom. This place is filled with callbacks to Mario 64. There's paintings you can jump through to face tougher versions of previous boss battles. By the way, Mario continues to murder. An outfit that throws back to the 64-bit style, Power Moon's in the shape of stars, and Yoshi is found on top of Princess Peach's castle. The post-game also introduces a bevy of new challenges to obtain more moons, including helping Jam and Toads find a song they want to listen to, racing free-running Koopas, picture matching, more difficult 2D sections, more reference puzzles, Toadette giving out moons for fulfilling achievements, dogs sniffing out moons, and even more references. I stayed here until I found almost every moon available since the entire map of it was available since I arrived. This brought my total moon count to over 400, which uncovered another part of the moon called Dark Side. Home of the evil rabbit species. Eh, they seem nice to me. Their home base is shaped like a carrot. I wonder what's inside. Uh, my eyes must be deceiving me. It's not possible. How many times have you died already? Uh, uh I don't know. I didn't count it. I am not really a math guy. This better be the last time we see each other. Since we're brawling on the moon this time, the lack of gravity is my friend. It takes no effort to dodge Topper's hat since I'm airborne 90% of the time. However, I was pretty reckless dropping down to one life, which carried over to Harriet's battle since this was a brutal boss rush. Fortunately for me, I've played this game before, so I already knew about the heart that gives three additional hit points hiding right outside the base. The first wedding planner is the most difficult of the bunch in my opinion, because I get so greedy trying to knock off all of his hats at once that I suffer the consequence for it. The rest of them are a walk in the park if you don't get impatient. Although I did screw up twice against Poison Boy, for whatever reason, and Linky Kong got me once too. I wasn't worried. There was a heart on the way up, and I was confident I could beat their Megazord with only three lives. I mean, I've already done it before, so their demise happened on my first attempt after getting the sixth heart piece. Bon voyage, Brutals. Hopefully you stay dead forever. 
I did win this elegant king's outfit as a reward for smashing those brats a third time, putting on full display a warning to the other bunnies not to mess with me. There's not a whole lot else to show here aside from a whole lot of hint art, and a few challenges. The art provides pictures of where moons are hidden in other kingdoms. I pushed those off for now since I found them tedious, and focused on acquiring all of the non-picture moons here instead. I landed backflips on piranhas while traversing an invisible road, and baited a bonsai bill to break a few blocks for me. This segment took longer than I like to admit. Upon returning to the Odyssey, the globe indicated there was still another kingdom to unlock. So I went back to where it all began in Cap Kingdom, since I didn't get any moons there during my first visit. And look who's here! Princess Peach and Tiara rocking touristy attire while they begin their own journey visiting each kingdom. She also gives power moons. Oh, and the moon rocks are now breakable in each kingdom, scattering moons throughout the area. They're not really worth covering though, since all of their locations are pinned on the map. Unless you want me to repeat myself saying, surprise, I found another moon by going to the X on the map. Yeah, I think not. I'm going to highlight the ones that stood out to me, like when I had to use the binoculars to track down the flying taxi in each world, or when I used a frog to jump above the fog, or used a paragoomba to slip through a fence, or when I returned to challenge rooms for the moons I missed the first time. And who could forget those tires and purple coins that make you check every corner of the earth? Cap Kingdom alone isn't going to be enough. So on to the Cascade Kingdom. Actually, it's gonna be every kingdom at some point. I became a dinosaur again to ruin the infrastructure of this land, relied on a yellow parakeet to spill clues about power moons, and then cleaned up house just like it told me to. All to just get dirty in the Sand Kingdom where I had to rely on my controller's vibrations. I have money, please take it. Shut up and take my money. They did, in fact, not give me any money. To get over that empty promise, I took out my frustration on a bullet bill by shaking my controller with extreme intensity to reach greater distances. Oogled over Princess Peach's summer dress, sunk into a secret alcove, caught a fish in the sand, I, I mean, Captain Toad? Saw that the ring was back in its rightful place, took out zombies like the good old Call of Duty days, entered a sinkhole, and found another basement. I gotta give Cappy a quick shout out. He really makes backtracking less stressful by telling you if there are any moons or purple coins left in rooms you revisit. As for the other Caps, I don't appreciate them hiding on people's heads and holding on to their moons. Anyways, that's over 500 moons. Oh boy, I can't wait to see what the last kingdom is. They must have saved the best for last. Yeah. Darker side? My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. I do think making three moon kingdoms was kind of a cop-out, but it is good to see all the friends I made along the way cheer me on to the end. Wow! Everyone is here! Pauline 2! Go, Mario! Jump, man! Wow, did you come up with that joke all on your own, Pauline? On the bright side, the end to our long journey is so close, I can see it. Well, I was wrong. Turns out there's a final platforming gauntlet to reach the true ending of this game. Similar to the Brutals finale, if I stack a million Goombas to stomp on the purple button at the beginning, I can start the course with six lives. It's a good thing too, because I'm probably gonna need them since I haven't played this game in years. But I'm no slouch either. I'll be fine during the wall jumps, swinging pole to pole above hell heated lava, leaping from one metallic hill to the next over more dreadful lava, taking a swim in the lava, hopping across a multitude of lava puddles, stretch my legs, take a nice bath, and cosplay as Spider Yoshi. Spider Yoshi does whatever a Yoshi can. Another crowned heart? I guess I did waste my time at the beginning. I'll keep that in mind for future attempts. Back to the platforming. This next part is incredibly easy to cheese as long as you're not playing in handheld mode. Simply constantly shake your controller while flying with glide on, and you'll stay sky high the entire time passing by the flies and the forks. Now here's where I screwed things up. I think everyone knows what a spiny is, but what the heck are these things? Bowser should have yelled at these colorful critters in the movie. To get through this foggy mess, it helps to trigger the traps to both diminish the fog and wipe out the spiny ripoffs. As a result, things get chaotic and messy. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Oh, no. 
Upon retry, I timed my jumps a lot better. Still made a few mistakes, but did a whole lot better than the last time I tried. I started this chunk with five lives and came out with two. Whew. Then the next challenge featured my favorite capture. Surely I wouldn't mess up. Oh, I missed. Man, I completed the first half of the darker side with ease, and now I'm slipping up everywhere, it seems. However, I will blame the janky controls when trying to jump sideways in the 2D section. You're supposed to press down to go left, then the controls change back to normal. It feels weird. Sayonara, Donkey Kong. Hello, Bowser. Capturing Bowser wraps up the darker side trials. The developers express their thanks for playing the game, and our long journey's end is finally within our grasp. All that for three moons? Sheesh. Thankfully, the invisibility hat is given as a grand prize, too. Although, nothing beats seeing Peach's new fits at each kingdom. Is... is she wearing... Oh, have mercy. I think I'm in love. This one is for my one and only true love, Princess Peach. Peach. You're so cool. And with my star, we're gonna rule. Peach, understand. I'm gonna love you till the very end. Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you. Peaches, peaches, peach. Love really makes a guy come out of his shell. I did collect hundreds of moons during that song, and I've already arrived in the final stretch back at Bowser's Kingdom. Jizo's Big Adventure? Is that a JoJo reference? Speaking of big, look at the size of the Odyssey sale. Less than 100 to go, and every purple coin has been found. There was only one regular moon left, coincidentally, on the moon before I had to tackle the hint art. Yup, that's right. I left almost all the hint art for last. They took a decent chunk of time to do because of all the load screens I had to sit through when zigzagging kingdom to kingdom. Then I'd have to press the home button, go to album, sort for Mario Odyssey screenshots, look at this photograph, then ground pound. 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 Look at this photograph! 880 moons! Let's go! This achievement is solidified with the sail turning gold, and a new portrait of Bowser has appeared in the wedding hall. This painting is a tougher boss fight with Bowser, similar to the ones found at the Mushroom Kingdom when I first got there. I'll be honest though, I couldn't really tell the difference. Looking back on it now, I guess he spun his tail more, but it didn't phase me, and I think the small orange rocks were new during the captured Bowser portion. I don't know. All I know is I got dumped again. I was missing two captures, one music track, and a few outfits. Apparently, I needed to smack this radio in Cap World to unlock the missing song. And I didn't even know piranha plants were capturable. Well, that completes those lists. All that remained were three outfits. And one of them cost 9,999 coins. This is going to be a drag, is what I would have said if I was making this video right when the game was released. Why? Well, Luigi's Balloon World has been added since. This mode alone has made farming much, much more bearable. Check this out. I started with around 2,000 coins, then just spammed the A button in Luigi's menu to go after the easiest balloons to find. That single balloon, along with ranking up, netted me 300 coins. Then if you keep going on a win streak, Luigi gives you even more coins. In three minutes, I bought the gold suit. A few more minutes later, the metal suit. It took more time for the skeleton, but it wasn't even half an hour. And that's how I got the gold star on my save, proving I 100%ed Mario Odyssey. These kinds of videos take a long time to make. Least you can do is give the video a like and subscribe. You all have a good one. Thanks.